ever take a look at an elephant's behind? Besides all the wrinkles, sagging, and muscles, their tails stand out as unique not only to these most famous of pachyderms, but to all other land animals. As small and inconspicuous as the elephant's tail is, it plays an extremely important role in their lives you might have otherwise never known about. Let's take a closer look. As humans, we have evolved to make the tools we need to survive. We aren't born with them attached to us. For those critters that don't have hands, they have to make do. Plenty of these critters have body parts adapted to help them in ways their hands or feet cannot. Elephants are easily the best example. They got big for multiple reasons, but to eat a lot more is a good general one. To be big, they needed columnar limbs and huge cushioning feet. You can't have hands and huge cushioning feet at the same time. So as they got bigger and smarter, they needed some part of them that could be used as a hand. Their nose was the most obvious choice, as their ancestors already had mini trunks for snorkeling. Tusks used for foraging could now be expanded into multi-use tools for courtship, defense, offense, food processing, and more. One of the most underappreciated tools in the elephant's toolkit is their tail. As boring and useless as it first appears to be, an elephant's tail is extremely important to them. Elephants are so big that insects are a real problem. In order to get rid of them, they cover themselves in mud. Flies don't care too much about a little bit of mud, so elephants have to improvise. They use their ears to shoo insects away from their front end, and utilize their tails to swat them from their rear. As a side effect, using their tail as a fly swatter frees up their trunk, tusks, and feetsies to get on with any other tasks they need to do. Their tails aren't very interesting to look at. Just a long tube of bone, muscle, gristle, and leather. But it's the tip where things get a little more interesting. The tip is wide, rounded, and flat like a paddle. The skin here becomes rough and cornified like the stuff you see on big bird feet. The hair emerges from the sides of the paddle, but it's not the same kind of hair that covers their bodies. The stuff coming out of the tail is more like quills, hardened and hollow and made of a type of keratin similar to the stuff that makes up a rhino's horn. These quill hairs also tend to grow longer than the true hairs that cover their bodies, with lengths up to 100 centimeters recorded. Just like their trunks, the elephant's tail can act as a hand. It's commonly thought, like a human child holding their mother's hand as they cross the street, that an elephant calf would hold their mother's tail for guidance, protection, or comfort. Turns out this observed behavior is used to slow down the other elephant, like when two juvenile males play, or a male is horny for a female in heat. The tails serve yet another function, individual identification. Like what was once thought of the horns, frills, and scallops of the Ceratopsian dinosaurs, the tails of elephants actually function to help tell individuals apart. Every elephant's tail is different from every other. Some are short, some are long, some have less hair, while others are super hairy. Sometimes they even get bitten off throughout their lives. Genetics and life experience plays a huge role in what each individual's tail looks like. These fly swatters can also be used in communication. Elephants are smart, so they need quick ways to show their emotions and to talk with others. The raising of the tail can mean the individual is fearful, highly playful, or super excited. The whole grabbing each other's tail thing, when not used by mother and baby, can be a sign of playfulness with some horny males grasping his chosen female's tail to protect her from other males. Elephants further use their tails as a sensory organ. By that, I mean that when in a group of other elephants, an individual will use their tail to feel how close they are to their herd mates without having to look over their shoulder or pivot their whole bodies around. They will forcefully swat somebody behind them to tell them they're too close. It's also a good way to keep an eye on their calves without literally keeping an eye on them. If they can feel their babies with their tails, then they know where they are. For the wildlife conservationist or ecologist, the tails offer a window into the recent past. As an elephant grows, their hairs grow too, with the base of the hair being the youngest and the tip being the oldest. As these tail quills grow, they pick up elements that were in the elephant's body, like carbon and nitrogen. 
Different levels of carbon and nitrogen are deposited in these hairs, depending on how much of it is in the environment at the time. So, the tail hairs can help a researcher track the environmental conditions throughout an individual elephant's life. This helps to better understand where they move to, how their habitats are doing, how much water they get, and their need for space. Researchers use the elephant tail hair for conservation, but the tails are used in other, rather sinister ways by poachers. The collection and sale of naturally shed elephant tail hairs is legal, but in many cases the hair is more than likely illegally removed from living or poached elephants. The tail hairs have historically been revered by some cultures as lucky charms, and there's a black market for elephant tails just as there is one for their tusks. Obviously, this is extraordinarily unethical. Sure, it's unethical from the start since it requires the culling of these animals whose populations are rapidly declining, but I find it doubly unethical because you're doing it to animals who are both especially important to the well-being of their ecosystems and animals who are essentially as smart as people. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin. Thank you.